Hey guys, what's up everyone? In today's video, I will show you everything that you need to know about the Python syntax. As you know, we have a bunch of new Python tutorials on our website, seosec.com, and this is one of the first tutorials you should look at if you are interested in learning the Python programming language. I'm going to show you all of this in a REPLIT repository, which you can go and fork and play around with yourself. This is the best way to practice Python. I leave a link to that in the video description and you can also find a link in the written article for that. You can just fork it, you can create a free account and then directly code along. So I recommend you to do that before we get started. So in Python, we use white spaces or indentation for code structuring. If you have been coding in other languages such as JavaScript before, you probably have seen that certain statements are ended with a semicolon like so. This is not the case in Python. In Python, everything is structured using white space. It is up to you if you want to use spaces or tabs, which kind of is an ongoing discussion uh, between people who prefer tabs over spaces or vice versa, but it's really personal preference. We like to use tabs because it keeps everything more uniform. But do note, if you use spaces, according to the official PEP8 style guide, you should use four spaces for indentation. And if you use tabs, just one tab is fine. You should never mix spaces and tabs, always stick with one. So if we use a one tab here, that's one tab, but if you actually look at four spaces, one, two, three, four, that's a bit further indented, um, but that's fine. If you use tabs, which we do recommend you for ease of use, uh, then it, one tab is just fine. So let's look at an actual Python code snippet. Now don't worry about any of the things that I'm writing here, you don't need to understand it, it's simply about indentation. If we create a function in Python, we use the dev keyword and then we do the name of our function and uh, then we do parentheses on the end and a colon and then we do a print statement here and you can see while I was pressing enter here, it already automatically indented our code, which means that we are now working inside of this function. So we do hello from our function. This is a simple print statement. You will learn more about this later. Again, this is only about the structure of the code. And now if I hit enter once more, then I'm still inside of this code block. And if I hit enter once more, at least here in REPLIT, every editor is different, but most of them have some form of auto indentation. And uh, that's how you can work. And if you want to actually get back into the function, you can just go back one step up and then press the tab key and you will be in the exact same line here. And this is exactly what we are talking about. So this is the indentation. Now, if we actually want to call the function, we do our function and parentheses on the end. And then if we run our code, our code will run and print the statement that's coming from our function. But again, don't focus on what is all of that here. Uh, just focus on the indentation part. And you can see that this is clearly indented one tab in. You may also recognize that we don't need any kind of semicolon at the end of our function statement or of our print function here. Uh, we don't need any of that. So this not only allows us to write less code, but also makes it more of a human readable language that actually reads a little bit like English. To summarize here, uh, why or what are some advantages of using this approach? There is better readability, clearly defined functions by using indentation. Indentation is required, which makes reading other developers code easier. So if you jump into code of some other developer that you haven't been working with before, and it's all correctly indented, you can directly see that this is part of the function. And if it would be indented that way, you would see that it's actually not in the function and that the function is empty. So once you develop a little bit of an eye for that, then you can better understand why we indent code. There is also a lower barrier of entry. It makes learning Python syntax easier compared to other languages. So uh, all of that green uh, syntax you see up here is a comment and comments are essential in programming. Let's write another comment down below here. So this is a single line comment in Python and it won't run if you execute your code. 
Comments in programming languages are an essential tool to describe your code, not only if you work together with other developers, as previously mentioned, but also for yourself. If you have a project that you haven't been working on for longer periods of time, you will forget parts or sometimes all of it, all of its functionality. Comments help us to remember what we have written and with pointing out key elements of our code's uh, functionality. Writing comments is required in most programming related jobs since you almost always collaborate with other developers on different projects. Commenting in Python is straightforward. To write a comment, you simply put a hashtag in front of your comment like so and this indicates a comment to the compiler and it won't run this piece of text when you run your code. Another essential part of the Python syntax or understanding the Python syntax are strings or so-called string literals. So if you're declaring strings in Python, you have a bunch of options here. You can declare a string. Let's first create a variable here. Let's call it our string. This is how you declare a variable in Python if you haven't seen that before. And we can go and we can declare a string by using single quotes. We can call that our string. But we can also use double quotes instead of single quotes. And it doesn't really make a difference. We just have to make sure to not use too many quotes. So we only use double quotes for this. And this will work just the same. And to prove that to you, let's just print it out here. Print our string. And we quickly comment out that function call here. And this is also a way how you can just comment out code that you don't want to run when you're testing something. So this is printing out our string. Let's put that back to single quotes to demonstrate that it's actually working. And uh, then if you print that out, that prints out exactly the same. We can also use triple single quotes or triple double quotes, but it's crucial that you always start and end a string by using the same type of quotes. For example, if you start your string with a double quote, you can't end it with a single quote. So let's look at some examples below to better understand that whole concept. Let's create a single line string here and uh, give that single quotes. And then we say this is a single line string using single quotes. Okay, so this is our single line. Now we print it all out in the end. Let's create a bunch of strings that we can look at the output all together. Then we create another single line string and uh, we equal that to this is another single line string using double quotes. Okay, this is our second string. And then we create a multi-line string. So to create multi-line strings, we are going to use triple single quotes or triple double quotes. We do multi-line string equals, and then we do triple quotes. And if you just hit the button three times, it will automatically create triple quotes here. So you can see we have six quotes all together. And now we can go ahead and we can do, this is a multi-line string using triple quotes. Now let's create a final one that we call another multi line string and equal that to three double quotes, uh, triple quotes. Yeah, two. Okay, now I'm getting confused. It's six triple, six double quotes. And uh, then we do this is a multi line string using triple double, oh my god, triple double quotes. Okay, there we go. Now, if you want to print out all of that, we can simply do that by using a print statement. So we do print single line string, and then we just copy that a bunch of times so we don't always need to reprint it or retype it. Uh, we do that four times, and we do it's the other one called another single line string and then we do multi line string multi line string and then we do another multi line string another multi line string there we go so if you print all of that out we get the result and you immediately can see that there's actually a space between these and there is no space in here 
So why do we actually use multi-line strings? We use multi-line strings if we want to have some space in between the lines that we are printing. And this is exactly what we are seeing here. Now, if we go to the triple single quotes uh, line of code and we say this is a multi-line string using triple quotes and we just hit enter and we give that some space in between and then we run the code, then you can actually see that those lines have actually been separated. So this is not the case if we do that in a single line string. So if we would do that here, it would already give us an error because it recognizes that it's only single quotes or single double quotes in that case, and it doesn't allow us to hit the enter button. But the same is true for the uh, triple double quotes here. We can also use the enter key here to uh, create some space between the print statements. And if we look at that again, you can see that that is actually printing out with space in between. So to summarize that, we use multi-line strings to print out spaces between our lines, and we use usually single uh, single line strings using single quotes or double quotes when we just want to print out a single line with any space in between. So this is also an essential part of Python syntax. So the next thing we want to take a brief look at are so-called long statements. In the Python programming language, it is sometimes required to use longer statements that need to be separated for better readability. And we can utilize a backslash to achieve that. So what I'm talking about here is if you write a very long statement that would exceed the line here and in your code editor you maybe would not see the line anymore because it got too long then we can utilize a backslash to separate that line uh, much like in those multi-line strings so to do that i create a simple if statement here to demonstrate that for you don't worry about the logic here it doesn't it's not necessary it's just about the syntax so if we do a simple uh, statement here where we check if some numbers are equal to another or bigger or smaller than the other one we can just do that by creating a simple number game here. And then we do another end statement. And now let's say if we want to continue this logic on the next line, we can do a backslash here and then we press enter. Now we need to indent our code here a little bit for that to work. And then we do another uh, condition down here and then we do a colon at the end. And uh, then we want to print out something if that all, if all these conditions are true. So we do multi, line statement is running and uh, let's actually check if that works and it is working the multi-line statement is running so this is good to know because if you run a very long statements if you write very long statements here then you might run out of space and it gets hard to read so separating them in different lines makes it a lot easier the last thing I want to quickly talk about when it comes to understanding a basic Python syntax is casing. So by casing, I mean, how do we actually write our variable names and so on and so forth? So we do casing and then we look at some examples. So while sticking to casing isn't mandatory for your code to work, it is highly recommended to stick with the recommended casing standards for Python according to PEP8. And those standards are Variables, functions, methods, and modules are written in snake case. Classes are written in Pascal case and constants are written in capitalized snake case. We highly recommend sticking to these guidelines, which helps tremendously with making your code better readable, both for you and anyone who works with you. Let's take a quick look at some of the examples below, then you better understand what I'm actually talking about. So camel case means capitalizing the first letter of each word except the first one and removing all spaces. We do Python syntax and equal that to a string. That's camel case. So this is how camel case looks like. That's actually not used in Python a lot. Uh, very rarely I see that and it's not recommended in the style guide. So this is just for you to understand what camel case is. The next one is important. That's Pascal case, capitalizing all first letters and removing all spaces. So we do Python syntax. It would look like this. And then we say it's a Pascal case. Okay. So Pascal case is only used for class names in Python for class names. Okay, so we got that. The next one is snake case. Snake case is written like this, Python syntax. And then we equal that to uh, snake, snake case is 
used for variables, functions, methods and modules. Is used for variables, functions, methods and modules. Okay? And the last one is capitalized snake case. So we do Python syntax and capitalized is used for constants, is used for constants. Now you don't need to worry about what constants are. We have another article and video when you want to learn more about constants. I'll link it in the video description below. And you will learn everything you need to know about Python if you just check out our Python category on cosec.com. So to summarize what you have learned today, Python code is indented with spaces or tabs. That was the first thing we were talking about. In Python, we use snake case for variables, functions, methods, and modules. We use Pascal case for classes. We use capitalized snake case for constants, as you, as you just have seen here. We can separate long statements with the use of a backslash. We can use different types of quotes for string literals. That's what you have seen here. And finally, we can use hashtags for writing comments. Now, if you want to learn more about Python, we highly recommend checking out our Python category on cosec.com. If you click on learn on the top navigation bar and click on Python, there are all of our Python tutorials and all of our Python tutorials usually come with a corresponding REPL it that you can directly code with us and with a corresponding video as well if you prefer video content over written content. Make sure to bookmark the website and also make sure to check out our regular videos. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you back in the next video.